What's going on, Big Blue Nation? Will Turpin, UK Superfan here. On today's video, we're going to take a look at what was an exciting Saturday for the Big Blue Nation and what a great way to start off the new year of 2021. Kentucky's football team gets a, a finishing uh, win down, a finish the season up with a huge win in the Gator Bowl. And then, you know, Saturday afternoon, Kentucky goes and plays at Starkville against Mississippi State, picks up a huge win, seventy eight to seventy three in double overtime. And today we're gonna we're gonna unpack that and uh, talk a little bit about it. And uh, I guess, you know, to go ahead and get it started, uh what happened yesterday afternoon is is probably every young boy that's ever grew up in the state of Kentucky that played basketball uh at some point has stood out in his driveway or on the playground with nobody around, just shooting baskets, you know, saying Kentucky's down by X amount. And then he hits a three, and it's Kentucky's only down by this, and he hits another three. And, you know, I mean, it's 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 every kid, you know. I can't tell you how many times I probably did that, hundreds of times, uh, stood out in the driveway and did what Dante Allen did in a real game for the Kentucky Wildcats. And here's a kid from Falmouth, Kentucky, that wanted to play for Kentucky. Not because of, you know, this is where, you know, his dreams could become a reality and maybe play at the professional level. Now, he wanted, he, first and foremost, he wanted to play at Kentucky because it was Kentucky. And that's what he grew up on. And there's there's something to be said for that. It's just a special feeling with a fan base when it's it's one of our own. It's you know we want to see all these kids do well, but when it's one of our own, it's really special. And and honestly, what Dante Allen did yesterday, uh, he he'll be a legend in this state. Uh, he 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 did something that you know. Well, let's look at it. I mean, the season was on the brink. You know, Cal gets those two technicals, a little over nine and change left in the game. Kentucky, uh, Mississippi State goes, makes the three of the four technical free throws, puts Kentucky down nine points. Uh, to say that the season was literally dangling, it was right on the brink. I mean, another loss, and not only is is probably any excitement that we had for this year completely gone but it, you know it was going to be it was going to be a long season and and it still may be but for a glimmer of hope yesterday Dante Allen did really something that's going to probably be one of the most remembered regular season games and it's very hard to do that it's very hard to have a regular season game that's that memorable but when you look at the situation that Kentucky's team was in and then you look at the fact that it's a kid that we've all just been dying to want to see get on the court. And, you know, and really he had the weight of the world on his shoulders and he just tweeted out five days ago, I bet on me every time. Dante said, I bet on me every time. You know, when every kid on the team's confidence looks shook, here's a kid that, you know, never, never doubted any confidence. And when he got in that game, he let it fly, and oh, did he let it fly. You know, hit seven out of 11 three-pointers. You know, eight out of 13 shots. Played 32 minutes, scored 23 points, and it was 23 of the biggest points that this team had scored all year. I mean, really. I mean, we can get into it, and, and it was... It was eye-opening because it opened up so many things. When we come down the stretch and we look at the last 10 minutes of the game and we look at those two five-minute overtime periods, it's what the court looked like with Dante Allen out there making shots. You know, all of a sudden, Devin Askew and uh, Davion Mintz had driving lanes. And and, and the, the, the paint wasn't so crowded anymore, you know. It, it looked totally different. The floor spaced completely different. And, uh, you know, it's up to Kentucky now to, to take this ball and run with it and figure out exactly how do we get the most out of, you know, the pieces now that we have essentially 
a, a brand new piece. And and think you know, we did this without Terrence Clark. And you know everybody thinks you know well Terrence you know he wasn't on the court and we win. But if we go back and look just a couple of games ago, three games ago, you know he had a really really good game, and we thought that maybe he was the solution and putting him at point guard. So. If we can still figure out a way to incorporate Terrence back into this and get a Keon Brooks healthy, don't sleep on our Kentucky Wildcats just yet. You know, when, when, when we were, you know, it's sort of like one of those old 80s wrestling matches when they raise, you know, he's got, the, he's got Hulk Hogan in the sleeper, you know, and they raise his arm up once and it falls to the ground, you know, and he falls to the ground and he raises his arm up again and it falls to the ground. But then he raises it up again, the referee does, and before it goes down, he starts shaking. He starts shaking. And yesterday, that's what the Kentucky basketball team did. Before that third arm went all the way down, Dante Allen put his Superman cape on, and he led Kentucky to what was easily the most fun 20 minutes of basketball that we've seen. That last 10 minutes of the game and those two five-minute overtime periods was by far the most enjoyable time that we've had all season as a Kentucky basketball team. And now we've got a heartbeat. We're still alive. We're 1-0 and in the new season, as Cal said. We, we, you know, the, we, can, we can do some special things in the SEC tournament and play ourselves back into it. You know, let's look at it. How did we do that yesterday? You know, obviously, you know, Dante Allen, 8 out of 13 from the field, 7 out of 11 on threes. You know, he also had four rebounds. And, uh, you know, and a block shot and 23 big points. But, you know, let's look at Devin Askew. You know, you know, Devin struggles a little bit on defense sometimes, but nobody on the team plays harder. You know, he played more minutes than anybody. 43 minutes, hit 5 out of 10 shots, 1 out of 3 on threes. He chipped in with 4 rebounds. Kid had 6 assists, only 3 turnovers, playing 43 minutes, had 2 steals, 11 big points. Devin Askew is really, really going to be a good player for us. And and the good thing is, you know, here's a kid that's probably going to be back next year too for sure. And he's, I mean, he's really looking like the kind of point guard that uh, plays with that moxie that we can really, really get behind. You know, and, and another guy I think getting lost in this is Isaiah Jackson. You know, only played 20 minutes. Uh, but... Uh, you know, you know, we were we were playing a little smaller and really only playing with one big out there, you know. But you know, in twenty minutes, he still had four block shots and three steals. You know, you know, only had you know, you see the box score: two assists, uh, two points. Uh, you know, only two rebounds, but but four big block shots and three steals, and in his twenty minutes, he affected the game. Uh, I think the next kid that I want to talk about, though, is, I mean, who would have ever thought Lance Ware to play 35 minutes? You know, and you look at the box score and you say, well, four points, you know, one steal, one block. But the thing about Lance Ware is he's always competing. And it, and really, if you start looking at, you know, we talk about players in low basketball IQ or high basketball IQ, here's a kid that's always in the right place on the floor. Fundamentally, he's always in the right place. But what about those 13 big rebounds Lance Ware got us? 13 big rebounds and just hustled his tail off and and played hard every one of those 35 minutes. So proud of that kid right there. You know, Davion Mintz, you know, he, he, all, he played the second most minutes, 41 minutes. You know, you look at it, 3 out of 10 from the floor, 1 out of 4 on threes. Not his best performance. But he made some big plays down the stretch in that game. You know, chipped in with four rebounds. But he had five assists as well. You know, and a big steal. You know, you look at it, only seven points. But 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 he played gritty. He played hard on the defensive end. And, you know, again, it was just such a team effort. You know, if you look at Olivier Sarr, you know, six out of 16. It was very frustrating at times. But, oh, man, that was a huge shot he hit to start that second overtime, give Kentucky that three-point cushion. But, you know, it wasn't just the offense, you know, the 14 points that Olivier had. Uh, it, it was by far, you know, those 12 big rebounds. You know, he, Lance Ware and Olivier Saar, uh, you know, 
they competed so hard on that backboard for us, and it was that kind of effort. You know, Kentucky had 10 blocked shots and 10 steals in this game. I mean, they they beat Mississippi State uh, by just outworking them in the paint. And, and coming into the game, I just didn't see that happening. I could not have forecasted that happening, and I obviously couldn't have forecasted, you know, the hero of the day, Dante Allen, what he would do. Uh, Brandon Boston, 31 minutes, 4 out of 13, still chipped in with uh, 11 points. Didn't play a whole lot down the stretch. And and the reason why he didn't play a whole lot down the stretch was, you know, we were playing Lance Ware. We were playing Olivier Saar, Devin Askew, uh, Davion Mintz, and Dante Allen. That was sort of the lineup that we went with. And you didn't see uh, Isaiah Jackson, uh Terrence Clark obviously didn't play in the game because he was hurt, and you didn't see Brandon Balson, who were the three most highly rated players coming into the season, and we won that game in overtime without any of the three on the floor. So that tells me that uh, this Kentucky team has an incredible amount of upside as the season goes on because if we can figure out how to get Terrence going and we can figure out how to get Brandon Boston playing to his strengths, taking better shots, letting the game come to him, and him not having to force it. You know, when you start looking at those three guys as being your six, seven, and eight guys, you know, the upside for this team is immense. But, you know, like Lance Ware's got to be playing. There's no doubt about it. I mean, he just plays the game the correct way, and that's what you have to have. You know, he can make a pass – you know, from the high post to the low post. He can get in the post and catch the ball and understand how to get position. You know, a lot of time the, the bigs for Kentucky would be fighting for position when they weren't even in a scenario where the ball was on their side of the floor where they could even catch the ball. Kentucky's bigs need to start trying to catch the ball. I mean, start getting position when they're, when they're actually somebody, when the ball's on their side of the floor where they could actually receive the ball. You know, there's things that we can still clean up. You know, I noticed we'd throw the ball into the paint, and one of our guards would actually cut into the paint. Well, that was just bringing another defender in there, making it easier to double team. So there's still things, lots of things, looking at, you know, a little bit of the tape from yesterday that we can clean up. Uh, and, and obviously on offense, we were still really, really bad until Dante Allen put that Superman cape on. So... You know, it'll be really exciting to see what happens against Vanderbilt on Tuesday night. Uh, that's the one thing that, you know, I'll say is Tuesday night's game against Vanderbilt will really be a tell-all as to what are we going to look like, what are we going to play like, are we going to continue to ride uh, this uh, this little you know engine that could, Dante Allen, the man with all the confidence, the whole fan base dying for the kid to play, you know, and – all the pressure in the world on this kid to say, and, and literally he walks in and puts that cape on and saves the season. I couldn't be more prouder of, of a kid. You know, I've always gravitated towards, you know, being big fans of the Kentucky, local homegrown Kentucky boys putting that jersey on. You know, you know, it just recently, you know, Dante, uh, I mean, uh, not Dante, uh, just recently, uh, Dominic Hawkins and Derek Willis, you know, were two of my favorites. Uh, and, and and Dante just he just won our hearts yesterday. He went in there and uh, he took he he he's a le- he's going to be a legend. I don't know what he does from here on out at Kentucky, but he did something extremely special yesterday, and I, I couldn't be uh, you know just more happier for him. And you know staying with it and staying with it, you know not getting to play, not getting to play, and then just. Grinding it out, it it was a really really awesome thing to see, you know, and and you know I don't I don't want to let you know run this thing too long. I mean we could dip down into a lot more of the numbers from yesterday. You know, Kentucky shoots eleven out of twenty one on threes, but like I said, half of that was seven out of eleven of that was Dante Allen. Uh, you know we still didn't shoot great from the field. Uh, you know in reality we shot. Uh, 41.6%, but 52%. You know, Kentucky only shot eight free throws yesterday. Went three out of eight. Uh, but, you know, points in the paint, 30. You know, that's, you know, that that was just huge. Uh, you know, and that was 
so many offensive rebounds and put back, you know. Uh, special day for Kentucky. You know, the football team finished up the season with a big, huge win uh, against, a, uh, against an ACC school, uh, NC State. Uh, just a good day. You know, I kept saying over and over, better days are coming, Big Blue Nation. And, uh, you know, let's hope they are. Let's. I think, you know, this could be a turning tide for the season. You know, Kentucky defensively, you know, we talked about Iverson Molinar and DJ Stewart, the hottest two shooting guards in the entire nation. They come into the game shooting uh, right at 50% on three-pointers for the season. Kentucky holds them to two out of eight from downtown and really – you know, DJ Stewart, 5 out of 16. Iverson Molinar, 8 out of 21. I mean, that was a combined 13 out of 37. I mean, that's that's where we won the game. Kentucky wins the game, you know, with defense, rebounding, and, uh, you know, a local kid that just said, you know, we're going to turn this thing around. So, there it is, Kentucky fans. Uh, we will... Be right back with you uh, tomorrow. We'll have the preview video up for Vanderbilt. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for, for hanging with us through this rough stretch. Subscribers numbers are still going up. Uh, video views are still going up. I thank everybody for all the likes and the shares of the videos. You know, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that like button. And, uh, you know, we kept saying better days are coming, Big Blue Nation, and now, you know, let's hope Kentucky can get on this run. Uh, like I said, I'll be right back at you guys tomorrow with the preview video for Vanderbilt, and we'll take a comprehensive look at what that's going to look like, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video. Y'all have a good day. Go Cats!